Ancient mysteries, topics that have puzzled archaeologists and researchers for centuries. I hope you're excited as I am to dive into a bunch of cool mysteries of our past, since this chart has a bunch of really interesting and obscure ones. Also this video will be a part 1 of 2 parts where I'll be covering around the first 3 tiers in this one and finishing the rest in a later one. Anyways, no more stalling, let's get into the video now with the first entry of tier 1, Crystal Skulls. Crystal skulls are intriguing artifacts often associated with mystery and ancient legends. These skulls are carved from various types of quartz crystals such as clear quartz or quartzite and are known for their smooth, skull-like shapes. They are believed to originate from various ancient civilizations like the Aztec, Maya or even Atlantis with their true origins remaining uncertain. Many people attribute mystical or supernatural powers to crystal skulls, claiming they possess healing abilities or store ancient knowledge. Some legends suggest that they were used by ancient civilizations for spiritual rituals, healing practices, or even as tools for communication with the spiritual world. The most famous crystal skull is the Mitchell Hedges skull, discovered in Belize by Anna Mitchell Hedges in the 1920s. Its craftsmanship and alleged supernatural powers have fueled speculation about its origins and purpose. However, skepticism surrounds these claims. Experts and scientists suggest that most crystal skulls were likely created in the 19th or 20th centuries in Europe and not by ancient civilizations. Detailed examinations using modern technology also reveal tool marks consistent with more recent carving techniques. Did the 10 plagues of Egypt really happen? The 10 plagues of Egypt are a series of calamities described in the biblical book of Exodus, which is part of the Old Testament. According to the biblical account, these plagues were inflicted upon Egypt by God through the prophet Moses to secure the release of the Israelites from slavery. The 10 plagues, as described in Exodus chapter 7 to 12, include turning the Nile River into blood, infestations of frogs, gnats of lice, swarms of flies, and more. However, there's limited archaeological or historical evidence outside the biblical text to confirm these specific events, as they're described in Exodus. Some scholars interpreted the plagues as symbolic or metaphorical representations of natural phenomena, ecological disasters, or existing diseases that might have affected ancient Egypt. Other scholars and religious believers view the events as actual occurrences, pointing to potential natural explanations for some of the plagues. For instance, phenomena like red tides, which can turn water red, could be a natural explanation for turning the Nile River into blood. Similarly, locust swarms and diseases affecting livestock or humans are probable to have happened in ancient times. Where was Homer's Ithaca? The exact location of Homer's Ithaca, the legendary island home of the Greek hero Odysseus in the epic poem The Odyssey, has been a subject of debate among scholars for centuries. In the poem, Ithaca is depicted as an island kingdom where Odysseus ruled and where his wife Penelope awaited his return during his lengthy journey after the Trojan War. Several modern locations in the Ionian Sea, part of the Greek archipelago, have been proposed as potential candidates for the real Ithaca, including the modern-day island of Ithaki, located west of mainland Greece. Scholars and archaeologists have explored multiple theories, geographical clues from the ancient texts, and archaeological evidence to identify the most likely location. Despite ongoing research and exploration though, there isn't definite evidence pinpointing the precise ancient site of Homer's Ithaca, leaving the question of its exact location still open to interpretation. Thule Thule, as described by the ancient Greek explorer Pythias, is a mysterious and mythical place. Pythias, who hailed from the Greek city of Massalia, now Marseille, France, is the first person known to have written about Thule, following his travels between 330 and 320 BC. In his now lost work, On the Ocean, Pythias described Thule as an island six days of sailing north of Britain, near the frozen sea. Pythias described Thule as a place where neither earth nor sea existed in the usual forms, but rather a mixture of the two, similar to a marine lung, in which the earth, sea, and all things were suspended. This mixture was impassable by foot or ship. The explorer also noted that Thule was populated and its soil was tilled, which makes Iceland and Greenland less likely candidates as they were colonized centuries after Pythias' time. He also described Thule as a land where nights were only 2 or 3 hours long, and in the summertime, there was no darkness at all. The exact location of Thule still remains a mystery, with theories suggesting it could be anywhere from Britain to Iceland or even near Trondheim in Norway. Over the centuries, Thule has attained kind of a mythic stature though, becoming more of an idea than an actual place. The Mysteries of the Parthenon The Parthenon, an ancient Greek temple dedicated to the goddess, was built in the 15th century BC atop the Acropolis in Athens. One of the Parthenon's enduring mysteries lies in the way it was built. The precision in the placement of its columns and the mathematical sophistication in its design, particularly the curvature and emphasis in the columns, have left experts wondering about the methods employed by its builders. 
Another intriguing aspect is its original appearance, as it underwent various transformations over millennia. The temple was covered with intricate sculptures and decorations, notably the magnificent friezes, metopis, and the colossal statue of Athena Parthenos. However, these ornate elements suffered damage and removal during different periods, notably the Elgin Marbles' controversial removal by Lord Elgin in the 19th century, now displayed in the British Museum. Moreover, mysteries shroud the temple's function and the rituals conducted within its sacred spaces. While it's primarily recognized as a place of worship, the specifics of the ceremonies and religious practices carried out within its walls still remain pretty mysterious. Legio Ajax Hispana Legio Ajax Hispana, or the Ninth Spanish Legion, played a significant role in Roman history. Its origins can be traced back to the early days of the Roman Republic, and it served in various conflicts and campaigns across Europe. The Ninth Legion earned its name Hispana due to its recruitment from the Iberian Peninsula, which is modern day Spain. It was initially established around the 1st century BC and gained prominence for its disciplined soldiers and combat prowess. The Legion participated in several key battles and military campaigns, including conflicts in Hispana, Gaul, and Britain. One of the enduring mysteries and debated aspects of the Ninth Legion involves its disappearance from historical records. While historical accounts document the Legion's involvement in Britain during the Roman conquest of the island, notably during the early years of Emperor Nero's reign in the 1st century AD, there is a lack of definite evidence or documentation regarding its fate after a certain period. Some theories suggest that the Ninth Legion met a catastrophic end in Britain, possibly during a rebellion or battle, leading to its annihilation or absorption into other military units. Others propose that the Legion might have been redeployed to other regions of the Roman Empire, or suffered significant losses but continued to exist under a different name. The Mycenaeans The Mycenaeans, an ancient civilization of the Late Bronze Age, hold a couple of mysteries still unsolved. One of them is the collapse of the Mycenaean civilization around the 12th century BC. The exact reasons behind their downfall remain uncertain and under debate. Theories range from internal factors such as societal unrest, political upheaval, economic decline and administrative issues to external factors like invasions or natural disasters. Understanding the precise cause or combination of factors linked to the abrupt collapse of their fortified centers continues to challenge researchers. Also, the language used by the Mycenaeans, termed Proto-Greek, has its origins in evolution largely veiled in mystery. Tracing the linguistic roots of the Mycenaean language and its connections to other ancient languages remain a puzzle in the study of ancient linguistics. Furthermore, the role and nature of Mycenaean religion, rituals, and beliefs remain elusive due to limited textual evidence and the complex nature of interpreting religious practices solely from archaeological remains. Deciphering the symbolic meanings behind their artifacts such as religious iconography on pottery or burial customs presents challenging in understanding their spiritual world. The Mystery of Homer The mystery surrounding Homer, the ancient Greek poet jersey credited with composing the epic poems The Iliad and The Odyssey, remains a captivating mystery in the study of classical literature and history. One of the primary mysteries regarding Homer is the question of his existence and identity. Scholars debate whether Homer was a single individual, a collective group of poets, or a legendary figure created through oral traditions. Some contend that Homer might have been a historical person who lived around the 8th century BC, while others propose the poems attributed to him were the culmination of centuries of oral storytelling and multiple contributors. Another intriguing aspect revolves around the authorship of the Iliad and the Odyssey. These monumental works are considered foundational to Western literature, showcasing remarkable storytelling, complex characters, and detailed descriptions of ancient Greek society. Additionally, the geographical and historical settings described in Homer's epics have sparked debate among scholars regarding their accuracy and the extent of historical truth within the narratives. Some argue that the poems contain elements of historical elements, while others view them as primarily mythological or legendary tales with embellishments and fantastical elements. The Mystery of Jesus' Missing 18 Years The New Testament offers limited details about Jesus' life between his adolescence and the commencement of his public ministry around the age of 30. This absence of explicit information about these years often referred to as the lost years or silent years, have led to speculation and various theories about what Jesus might have done during his time. Historically, there's scant documentation or direct evidence regarding Jesus' activities or whereabouts during these years. Some non-canonical texts and mythical traditions propose theories suggesting Jesus might have traveled to places like Egypt, India, or other regions to study, gain wisdom, or engage in spiritual practices. But, these theories rely on writings and legends that emerged long after Jesus' time, often lacking substantial historical evidence. 
As a result, the specific details of Jesus' life during these years remain largely unknown and continue to generate diverse interpretations. Was Caesarion really Caesar's son? Caesarion was claimed to be the biological son of Julius Caesar and Cleopatra, the last active ruler of ancient Egypt. However, historical evidence regarding Caesarion's paternity remains uncertain. Cleopatra and Julius Caesar had a relationship during Caesar's visit to Egypt around 48 to 47 BCE. Cleopatra then gave birth to Caesarion in 47 or 46 BCE, and she publicly declared him as the son of Caesar, possibly to solidify her son's claim to the throne and strengthen her political alliances. After Julius Caesar's assassination in 44 BCE, Cleopatra faced political turmoil and alongside her relationship with Mark Antony, aimed to secure her position and that of her son. However, the question of Caesarion's paternity became a point of contention, especially as Octavian, later known as Emperor Augustus, emerged as a rival to Mark Antony and Cleopatra. Octavian used Caesarion's claim as Caesar's heir to undermine his own political standing. He depicted Caesarion as a threat to his own rule and sought to eliminate any potential challenges to his authority. Historical records suggest that shortly after Cleopatra's death, Caesarion, believed to be around 17 years old, was captured and executed on the orders of Octavian, leaving his true biological relationship to Julius Caesar still unsolved in historical records. The Mystery of Yamatai Koku The Mystery of Yamatai Koku refers to a historical mystery surrounding an ancient Japanese kingdom mentioned in early Chinese historical text. Yamatai Koku, also known as Yamatai, or Queen Himiko's kingdom, is believed to have existed during the late Yayoi period, which is around 300 to 710 AD, in what is now Japan. The primary figure associated with Yamatai is Queen Himiko, a legendary ruler mentioned in Chinese historical texts such as the Records of the Three Kingdoms, written by Chen Shu. According to these accounts, Himiko was a powerful queen who ruled over a land with sophisticated governance and spiritual influence. The exact location and historical details about Yamatai Koku have been a subject of debate among historians and archaeologists. Some theories suggest that Yamatai might have been situated in the Yamato region, which later became a significant political and cultural center in ancient Japan. Archaeological excavations and research have provided some insights, but concrete evidence directly confirming the existence and precise location of Yamatai remains elusive. Some discoveries, such as ancient burial mounds and artifacts, have been associated with this period and potentially linked to the Yamatai kingdom. However, none have definitely proven to be the remains of Queen Himiko's realm. The Tower of Babel The Tower of Babel, a tale from the book of Genesis in the Bible, is a fascinating ancient mystery. According to the biblical account, humanity, once unified by a single language, decided to construct a city and a towering structure that would reach the heavens, aiming to make a name for themselves. This act of hubris did not go unnoticed by God, who decided to confound their language causing them to no longer understand each other and scattering them across the earth. The story is often interpreted as an explanation for the diversity of languages in the world. The exact location of the Tower of Babel remains uncertain, with several ruins in the region of Babylonia being potential candidates. Some theories suggest that the story of the Tower of Babel may have been inspired by the Babylonian Tower Temple north of the Marduk Temple, known as Babilo, meaning Gate of God. However, some scholars view it as a myth or a parable while others argue that it bears the marks of reliable historical accounts. Regardless of its historical accuracy, the Tower of Babel continues to be a symbol of human ambition and divine intervention, a tale that resonates with the timeless theme of the consequences of hubers. Vinca Culture The Vinca culture was an ancient civilization that existed in southeastern Europe during the Neolithic period, from approximately 5500 to 4000 BCE. Spread across parts of present-day Serbia, Romania, Bosnia, and more, it's recognized as a significant and influential prehistoric culture in Europe. Characterized by its well-organized settlements, the Vinca people built large communities with houses made of bud bricks. These settlements suggest a level of urban planning uncommon for that era. One of the most striking aspects of the Vinca culture is its distinctive pottery. Vinca ceramics were endured with intricate and elaborate designs featuring geometric patterns, stylized animals, and symbolic motives. These decorations, often consisting of spirals and other symbolic markings, are considered one of the earliest forms of symbolic communication in history. 
Despite their advancements though, many aspects of the Vinca culture remain a mystery. Questions persist about their language, religious beliefs, societal structure, and the reasons behind their eventual decline. The Vinca culture's legacy lies in its remarkable pottery, settlements, and technological advancements, providing valuable insights into early human civilization in Europe. What happened to Queen Nefertiti? Queen Nefertiti, wife of Pharaoh Akhenaten during ancient Egypt's 14th century BCE, remains a mysterious figure in history. Known for her beauty and influence, Nefertiti played a significant role in the religious and artistic revolution of the Amarna period, which shifted Egyptian belief toward the worship of the sun god Aten. The specifics of Nefertiti's fate after her husband's death are uncertain and subject to various theories. Some historical records suggest she might have died during Akhenaten's reign, yet concrete evidence confirming her death is lacking. There is no definite burial site or inscription confirming her passing. There are theories proposing different paths for Nefertiti's later life. One theory suggests she took on another name or identity, possibly as a co-regent or under a different title. Some speculate she might have assumed the roles of pharaohs such as Menkaker or Neferneferoten. Other conjecture suggests that Nefertiti fell out of favor or faced a political upheaval after Akhenaten's death. The theory surmises that she might have been intentionally removed from historical records by subsequent rulers for reasons that remain uncertain. In 2015, there was speculation about hidden chambers in Tutankhamun's tomb that might contain Nefertiti's remains or belongings. However, subsequent research and investigations did not conclusively confirm this possibility. What happened to the Ten Lost Tribes of Israel? The fate of the Ten Lost Tribes of Israel is a historical mystery that has intrigued scholars, theologians, and historians for centuries. According to biblical accounts, following the death of King Solomon around 930 BC, the ancient kingdom of Israel split into two, the northern kingdom of Israel and the southern kingdom of Judah. The northern kingdom consisted of ten tribes, while the southern kingdom mainly comprised of the tribes of Judah and Benjamin. In 722 BC, the Assyrian Empire conquered the northern kingdom of Israel, leading to the deportation and scattering of many Israelites from the ten tribes. These deported Israelites were dispersed across the Assyrian Empire, with some being assimilated into various cultures and societies. This event is commonly referred to as the Lost Tribes of Israel. Historical records and biblical accounts provide limited information regarding the fate of these tribes. There are numerous theories and speculations that some migrate to different regions like Asia, Africa, Europe, and the Middle East. Folklore, legends, and certain historical accounts also suggest potential connections between dispersed Israelites and various ethnic groups or communities across the world. Where did the Temple Menorah go? The fate of the Temple Menorah, a sacred seven-branch candelabrum from the Second Temple in Jerusalem, is shrouded in mystery. Following the Roman destruction of Jerusalem in 70 CE, the menorah's whereabouts became uncertain, and historical records provide limited clarity on its ultimate destination. After the fall of Jerusalem, the temple menorah was among the treasures looted by the Roman forces under the command of Titus. It is believed that the menorah was taken to Rome as part of the spoils of war. There, it might have been displayed in a triumphal procession or placed in the Temple of Peace, a structure built by the Emperor Vespasian to commemorate the victory over Jerusalem. Subsequent historical accounts and records lack clarity on what happened to the menorah after it reached Rome though. There are various theories that suggest it was melted down, hidden, or transported elsewhere. However, there is no definite historical evidence confirming its ultimate destination or what happened to it after it disappeared. Some believe it might have been lost or destroyed, while others entertain the possibility that it could still exist somewhere hidden. Venus figurine Venus figurines are prehistoric sculptures of women often portrayed with exaggerated body features, while the limbs and facial features are basically absent. These figurines, dating back to the Paleolithic era, have been discovered across various regions, including Europe, Asia, and the Middle East. The Venus figurines, named after the Roman goddess of love and beauty, are among the earliest known representation of the female form created by ancient humans. These artifacts provide valuable insights into the artistic and symbolic expressions of early societies. The exact purpose and significance of these figurines remain pretty unknown though. Some theories suggest that they might have served as fertility symbols, religious icons, or representations of feminine beauty or power. Others suggest they could have been used in rituals or ceremonies related to fertility, childbirth, or spiritual beliefs. The Mysteries of the Great Sphinx of Giza 
The Great Sphinx of Giza, an iconic monument in Egypt, has fascinated humanity for millennia. One of the primary mysteries surrounding the Sphinx is its original purpose and the identity of the figure it represents. Carved from a single limestone block, the Sphinx features a human head believed to represent a pharaoh atop the body of a lion. While many scholars attribute its creation to Pharaoh Kafir during the Old Kingdom of Egypt, the exact pharaoh represents remain debated. The purpose of the Sphinx also remains uncertain. Some theories suggest that it was a guardian or protective symbol, while others suggest it had religious or astronomical significance. The alignment of the Sphinx with certain celestial bodies during specific astronomical events also lists speculation that it might have had roles in ancient Egypt cosmology or religious beliefs. Furthermore, the erosion patterns observed on the Sphinx body have fueled debates about its age and the possible existence of a much older civilization, predating the known ancient Egyptian civilizations. The extent and cause of the erosion, particularly the weathering on the Sphinx, have prompted some researchers to propose the idea of an earlier, more ancient origin, potentially dating back thousands of years before the known construction period. Who were the Philistines? The Philistines were an ancient people known primarily from the biblical and archaeological sources. They are believed to be one of the Sea Peoples, a group of seafaring individuals who migrated from the Aegean region to the Eastern Mediterranean during the Late Bronze Age. The Philistines settled along the southern coastal area of present-day Israel, particularly in the region known as Philistia, which includes cities like Gaza, Ashkelon, Ashdod, Ekron, and Gath. They established a distinctive culture characterized by their material goods, pottery, and technological advancements. Historically, the Philistines are often portrayed as adversities of the Israelites in the Hebrew Bible. They engaged in conflicts with ancient Israel, notably during the time of the Judges and the early monarchy. The most famous biblical account involving the Philistines is the story of David and Goliath, where Goliath, a Philistine warrior, was defeated by the young Israelite shepherd David. The Inca Egypt Mystery the Inca Egypt mystery refers to a theory or hypothesis that suggests a possible ancient connection or shared cultural influence between the Inca civilization of Southern America and ancient Egypt. This idea is primarily based on certain perceived similarities in architectural features, religious symbols, and cultural practices found in both civilizations. Proponents of this theory point out several purported parallels between Inca and ancient Egyptian culture. They cite similarities in the construction of monumental structures such as the pyramidal shapes found in both the Inca and Egyptian architectural styles. Additionally, some highlight perceived similarities in religious symbolism like the representation of serpents and sun worship. Some theories also say that there might have been transoceanic contact or cultural diffusion between the two civilizations in ancient times, suggesting that ancient Egyptians or people with knowledge of Egyptian culture might have traveled to Americas or vice versa. Now moving on to Tier 2. The Mystery of the Hypogeum The Hypogeum of Hal Salaflini is an ancient underground structure located in Paolo Matla, dating back to approximately 3600 BC. The Hypogeum is a complex series of underground chambers, passages, and halls carved into the limestone rock. It consists of three levels, showcasing incredible architectural precision and engineering skill for its time. The craftsmanship displayed in the construction of the Hypogeum is notable, with carved out chambers, decorated walls, an elaborate system of channels and cisterns, suggesting an advanced knowledge of acoustics. One of the most mysterious aspects of the Hypogeum is its purpose. While its exact purpose is unknown, it is believed to have been served as a necropolis or burial site with thousands of human remains discovered within its chambers. However, some areas within the complex also indicate potential ritualistic or religious significance, leading to speculation about its multi-use as a place of worship, ceremonies, or other spiritual activities. The acoustic properties of certain chambers within the hypogeum have also intrigued researchers. Some areas produce peculiar sound effects, including resonate echoes, suggesting deliberate acoustic design or usage for rituals, music, or vocal performances. Where was Anka Nesenamun's tomb? Anka Senamun, the wife of Pharaoh Tutankhamun, daughter of Akhenaten and Nefertiti, remains a mysterious figure in ancient Egyptian history. Despite historical prominence, the precise location of her tomb continues to elude researchers and remains a subject of debate. Anka Senamun lived during the Amana period, which we talked about earlier on how it was a distinctive era characterized by religious reforms and a shift in Egypt's capital city. Although historical records and inscriptions confirm her existence, her burial site remains a mystery. Several theories propose potential location for Akhenaten's tomb. 
Some suggest she might have been buried in the Valley of Queens or within the royal tome complex in the Valley of the Kings due to her status as a queen. However, the exact tome associated with her has not been definitely identified. Some excavations have yielded some discoveries, but none conclusively linked to her. For instance, the discovery of the tome labeled KV-21A in the Valley of the Kings contained the remains of two females, sparking some speculation that was connected to her, but the identification still remains inconclusive. The Babylonian Map of the World The Babylonian Map of the World is one of the earliest known world maps, dating back to the 6th century BC during the Babylonian civilization. Created on a clay tablet known as the Imigo Mundi, this ancient map offers a unique depiction of the world as understood by the Babylonians. The map portrays the world as a circular disk surrounded by water and divided into several sections or regions. The central area is believed to represent the Babylonian region itself, with nearby areas depicted as circular islands or landmasses. These landmasses are marked with various geographical features, cities, and rivers, with each region bearing inscriptions that identify locations. One of the distinctive features of the Babylonian map is its inclusion of mythical or fantastical elements alongside geographic details. It incorporates mythical creatures, divine beings, and symbols, blending both the real and imagined elements in the representation of the world. While the accuracy of the Babylonian map of the world in terms of geographical precision is limited, it still provides some cool insight into ancient Babylonian cosmology, beliefs, and their understanding of the world. Saqqara Bird the Saqqara bird is an intriguing ancient Egyptian artifact discovered in 1898 in Saqqara, Egypt. Crafted from sycamore wood and dating back to around 200 BC, the small wooden object is shaped like a bird and has sparked speculation about its possible purpose and significance. Measuring about 18 centimeters in length, the Saqqara bird has a bird-like shape featuring a falcon-like head, a long beak, wings, and a tail. Some interpretations suggest that it might resemble a bird in flight or an airplane-like design. One of the most debated aspects of the Saqqara bird revolves around its potential function. Some theories propose that it could have been a ceremonial or ritualistic object, possibly representing a symbolic or religious bird associated with ancient Egypt. Others have speculated that due to its aerodynamic appearance, it might have served as a model or a toy mimicking a bird. The aerodynamic design of the Saqqara bird has also led to some weird theories suggesting that it might have been an ancient attempt at aviation or an early prototype of an aircraft. Proponents of his theory point to its resemblance to modern airplanes and suggest that it could have been used as a glider or a model to study flight. What was the purpose of the Tyrian Erotic Papyrus? The Tyrian Erotic Papyrus, an ancient Egyptian artifact dating back to the Ramesseid period, which was around 1150 BC, is a scroll filled with explicit and detailed depiction of sexual acts and scenes. Despite its context, its precise purpose and original use remains uncertain. This papyrus scroll consists of a series of vignettes portraying various sexual encounters and positions between couples. The graphic nature of the illustrations and the variety of depicted scenes suggest the focus on fertility and love within ancient Egyptian society. Scholars propose several theories regarding the purpose of the Tyrian erotic papyrus. Some suggest that it might have served as a form of instructional or educational material, possibly used for the training of young men about sexual practices, fertility rights, or as a guide to ensure successful reproduction. Another interpretation suggests that it could have been employed in religious or ritualistic contexts related to fertility cults or ceremonies. The explicit scenes may have been associated with fertility rituals aimed at invoking divine blessings for procreation and fertility. Additionally, there's also other theories out there saying that the papyrus might have had a more private and personal function, potentially serving as a form of entertainment or as a private collectible within affluent or elite circles. Who were the Jean Nu? The Jean Nu were an interesting and powerful confederation of nomadic tribes and warrior horsemen who played a great role in Central Asian and Chinese history during ancient times. They emerged in the 3rd century BC and inhabited areas north of China, exerting influence over the Eurasian steppe region. The Jean Nu were renowned for their skilled horsemanship, formidable military prowess, and nomadic lifestyle centered around herding and pastoralism. They established a confederation of tribes left by a chieftain or ruler organizing themselves into a hierarchical social status. Under the leadership of their chieftains, such as Modu Chanyu, the Zhanyu expanded their territory and posed a considerable threat to the Han Dynasty of China. They engaged in frequent conflicts and skirmishes with the Han Dynasty, initiating a series of wars known as the Zhanyu Han Wars, which lasted for several decades. The Zhanyu's military tactics, particularly their expertise in mounted archery and cavalry warfare, posed significant challenges to the Han Dynasty. Despite several attempts to form alliances and establish peace treaties, the conflicts continued. 
In later years, political dynamics shifted, leading to internal divisions within the Zhongnu Confederation. Some Zhongnu factions aligned with the Han Dynasty, while others maintained their independence. This internal strife weakened the unity of it, and eventually contributing to the decline in the 1st century AD. Did Hero Stratus actually exist? Hero Stratus gained infamy for his destructive deed in 356 BC when he set fire to the Temple of Artemis, one of the seven wonders of the ancient world. His motive was driven by a desire for personal fame and notoriety, intending to achieve lasting recognition by perpetrating such a significant act of destruction. Hero Stratus succeeded in destroying the temple, causing immense damage to this revered structure. The Ephesinians, in response to his actions, imposed a harsh punishment on Hero Stratus, aiming to erase his name from history to discourage similar acts of vandalism driven by the pursuit of fame. The Ephesian authorities issued a decree forbidding the mention of Hero Stratus' name, fearing that acknowledging his deed would inspire others to commit similar acts for a notoriety. Despite this attempt to express his memory, Hero Stratus' name and infamous acts survived through historical accounts and written by ancient historians such as Strabo and Theopompus, ensuring that his name endured in historical records but the mystery is still out there. The Mysteries of Kefalonia Island Kefalonia is a Greek island in the Ionian Sea, and a noble mystery surrounding it is called Ketavortis, which are sinkholes near the village of Karavonlios. The sinkholes seemingly shallow seawater, which then disappears underground, link to speculation about where the water goes and how it re-emerges. Although studies suggest a connection to a system of underground channels transporting water to the Messalania cave or possibly contributing to a geological anomaly, the exact mechanics behind this phenomenon continue to interest scientists and remain a subject of ongoing research. Another historical mystery linked to Kefalonia is the disappearance of the islands of Tapos, an ancient city believed to have existed during antiquity. References to Tapos appear in historical texts, but the precise location and archaeological remains of this ancient city have eluded discovery leading archaeologists and historians curious about its existence. Moreover, Kefalonia's intriguing history includes myths and legends related to Odysseus, the hero of Homer's epic poem The Odyssey, like we discussed earlier. It is believed that Odysseus might have been associated with the island, adding a mystery between the potential connection of the island and the tales of the legendary Greek hero. Mukataat The Mukataat, also known as the mysterious letters or disjointed letters, refer to a series of individual Arabic letters that appear at the beginning of certain chapters of surahs in the Quran. These letters, consisting of Arabic elements such as alif, lam, mim, ta, sin, and others, appear in a disjointed or isolated manner without forming complete words or sentences. Their presence at the start of specific chapters in the Quran has intrigued scholars and remains a subject of debate within Islamic studies. Their exact meanings or purposes have not been explicitly explained in the Quran. Some scholars suggest that they might carry hidden or esoteric meanings known only to God, serving as a form of divine mystery or symbolism beyond human comprehension. Others propose that these letters might have served as markers or codes, aiding in the oral transmission and memorization of the Quran during the time of revelation. Additionally, certain scholars also suggest that the Mukatta could have been used to draw attention to the divine nature of the Quran and serve as a linguistic and rhetorical device. Scythian Ritual Gold Scythian ritual gold refers to a collection of ornate gold artifacts created by the ancient Scythian nomads, a group of Iranian-speaking peoples who lived in the Eurasian steppes from around the 9th to 1st centuries BC. These gold artifacts, known for their craftsmanship and artistic detailing, were used in various ritualistic and ceremonial contexts within the Scythian culture. They include artifacts such as necklaces, pendants, bracelets, and elaborate vessels. The Scythian artisans also added designs featuring animals, mythical creatures, scenes from daily life, and motifs rooted in their cultural and religious beliefs. These depictions often included representations of animals like deers, predators, fantastical beasts, and hybrid creatures, embodying the Scythians' connection to nature and the spiritual world. Many of these gold artifacts were found in burial sites, suggesting their significance in funerary practices. These items were believed to accompany the deceased into the afterlife, symbolizing status, prestige, and possibly serving as offerings to the gods. The Mystery of the Sumerian King List The Sumerian King List is an ancient Mesopotamian document that lists numerous kings who ruled over the Sumerian city-states. This ancient document provides a detailed account of Sumerian rulers, their reign lengths, and dynastic successions. It includes both historical figures and legendary or mythological kings, leading to debates among scholars regarding its accuracy, chronological accuracy, and the blending of historical facts with mythological elements. It is divided into two sections, the Antediluvian section, which refers to a time before a great flood, 
and the post-diluvian section, covering the period after the flood. The antediluvian section lists legendary kings with incredibly long reigns, often spanning thousands of years. This part of the list includes names like Alulim, Alagnar, and Emenlunana, among others, who are often considered more mythological than historical. The post-Diluvian section is believed to align more closely with historical periods and rulers of Mesopotamia, and includes names of kings from various Sumerian city-states and dynasties, detailing their reigns and successions. Additionally, discrepancies between the Sumerian king list and other historical records from neighboring civilizations, such as the Akkadian or Babylonian records, have sparked debates about his reliability and historical accuracy. How the Sumerians knew this much about our solar system the Sumerians' understanding of celestial bodies and the solar system has often intrigued scholars due to its depth and accuracy for an ancient civilization. What we know is that the Sumerians' knowledge of the solar system primarily stemmed from meticulous observations of the night sky over long periods. They were skilled astronomers who recorded the movements of celestial bodies including stars, planets, and the moon, tracking their positions, patterns, and apparent motions. Using simple tools like sighting devices or early astronomical instruments, the Sumerians observed the sky carefully noting and documenting the celestial phenomena they witnessed. The systematic approach to observing the heavens allowed them to recognize recurring patterns such as planetary movements and the phases of the moon. The Sumerians' extensive records and clay tablets, such as the Enuma Anu Enlid, contain astronomical observations and celestial omens. These texts served as repositories of knowledge, preserving information about planetary positions, lunar phases, and significant celestial events. Their knowledge was also transmitted and expanded upon by subsequent civilizations, particularly the Babylonians, who built upon the Sumerian foundation, refining astronomical techniques and creating more complex mathematical models for predicting celestial events. The Lost City of Z The Lost City of Z, also known as El Dorado or the City of Gold, refers to a fabled ancient city believed to hold immense wealth and treasures. This mysterious city has interest in explorers, adventurers, and treasure hunters for centuries. The legend of the lost city of Z emerged during the age of exploration, when European explorers ventured into uncharted territories in search of riches and mythical lands. El Dorado was often associated with the city or kingdom, believed to be overflowing with gold, precious gems, and unimaginable wealth. The quest for the lost city of Z came with various expeditions, most notably in South America, particularly in regions such as the Amazon rainforest and the Andes mountain. Explorers and treasure hunters ventured deep into the unexplored jungles, following rumors and tales of a hidden city that promised untold riches. One of the most famous expeditions in search of the lost city of Z was led by British explorer Colonel Percy Fawcett in the early 20th century. Fawcett firmly believed in the existence of a hidden city in the Brazilian jungle and embarked on several expeditions to find it. However, something weird is that Fawcett and his team mysteriously disappeared in 1925 during one of their quests. Noah's Ark in Mount Ararat the story of Noah's Ark and its association with Mount Ararat is a significant part of the biblical narrative found in the book of Genesis. According to the biblical account, Noah built an ark as instructed by God to survive a catastrophic flood that covered the earth. The ark served as a means to preserve Noah, his family, and pairs of animals during this event. The story mentions that after the flood waters receded, the ark came to rest on the mountains of Ararat, located in present-day Turkey. Over centuries, numerous explorers, researchers, and adventurers have been drawn to Mount Ararat in pursuit of finding remains or evidence of Noah's Ark. Several expeditions have reported sightings of what they believed could be remnants of the Ark, though no conclusive evidence has been universally accepted or scientifically verified. Some sightings have included aerial photos or images showing anomalous shapes or formations on the slopes of Mount Ararat, believed by some to resemble a ship or parts of a vessel. However, due to the challenging terrain, harsh weather conditions, and political restrictions in the region, Thorough scientific investigations and excavations have been difficult to conduct. Thonis Heraklion Thonis Heraklion was a legendary ancient Egyptian city that remained lost for centuries until its rediscovery underwater. Located at the mouth of the Nile River in the Mediterranean Sea, this once thriving port city was believed to have been founded around the 8th century BC. Thonis Heraklion served as a vital hub for trade and maritime activities between Egypt and other Mediterranean civilizations. It was an essential gateway for Egyptian trade with the Greece, the Mediterranean, and other regions, contributing significantly to Egypt's prosperity during the late period of ancient Egypt. The city was dedicated to the worship of both the Egyptian god Amun and the Greek hero Hercules, which is why it is known by both names. It boasted grand temples, palaces, and docks, serving as a bustling center for commerce, religious ceremonies, and cultural exchanges between ancient Egypt and the Greek world. 
However, around the 2nd century BC, a series of natural disasters, including earthquakes and rising sea levels, led to Athens Heraklion's gradual submergence into the Mediterranean. The city gradually sank beneath the waters, eventually becoming lost and forgotten for centuries, with a bunch of mystery. Unfinished Oblisek The unfinished Oblisek in Aswan, Egypt, harbors an intriguing mystery that revolves around its abandonment during the ancient quarrying process. This massive monument, if completed, would have stood as one of the largest obelisks ever carved by ancient Egyptians. The mystery primarily centers around a significant crack that runs through its length. The crack rendered the obelisk unsuitable for completion, prompting the ancient artisans to halt their efforts. While there are hypotheses about the cause of the crack, the exact circumstances that led to its formation remain uncertain. One prevailing theory suggests that a flaw or fracture in the granite bedrock might have caused the crack during the quarrying process. This theory proposes that the fracture appeared as the workers were chiseling and separating the obelisk from the bedrock, leading to the structural instability that resulted in the crack. Another hypothesis revolves around the possibility of human error or miscalculation during the quarrying and shaping process. Some scholars speculate that the ancient stonemasons might have encountered challenges in accurately gouging the granite's structural integrity, or might have overestimated the obelisk's potential size, leading to structural weaknesses that ultimately caused the crack. What Pope Leo said to Attila the Hun The encounter between Pope Leo I and Attila the Hun during the 5th century is a historical event that has gathered some mythical and mysterious elements over time. According to historical accounts, Attila the Hun, leader of the Hunnic Empire, was advancing towards Rome, causing fear and alarm across Italy. As Attila's forces approached Rome in 452 AD, Pope Leo I, known for his strong leadership and diplomatic skills, decided to confront the Hun leader. The exact details of their meeting are not extensively documented, linked to some mystery about what actually transpired during the encounter. Historical records suggest that Pope Leo I, accompanied by a small group of religious officials, met Attila at the gates of Rome. Despite the imminent threat to the city, Attila reportedly agreed to negotiate with the Pope. One prevailing legend, which has gained prominence over the time, suggests that during their meeting, Pope Leo I managed to persuade Attila to spare Rome from destruction through his eloquence and diplomatic skills. Some versions of the story even proposed that Attila claimed to have seen a vision of Saints Peter and Paul standing beside the Pope, which influenced his decision to withdraw his forces. Vault B of Padmana Baswami Temple The Padmana Baswami Temple, located in Theruvana Tapuram, Kerala, India, is a Hindu temple dedicated to Lord Vishnu and is one of the most important Vaishnava temples in the country. In 2011, a treasure trove of valuable objects, including gold thrones, crowns, coins, statues, and precious stones, was discovered in some of the temple's subterranean vaults. The temple has at least six known vaults, A, B, C, D, and F, with two additional vaults, G and H, discovered later. Vault B is the most mysterious and intriguing of all the vaults. It is believed to be sealed shut with the help of a mantra, known as the Ashtanagabad Mantra. This incantation is unheard of, and no one knows what it entails. According to popular belief, those who have tried to open the door have faced misfortune or even death. It is said that only a great saint it is said that only a great saint who is a devotee of Lord Vishnu can open the door by chanting the Gurudha Mantra. Also, there are no historical or contemporary documents about the contents of Vault B. Some speculate that a hidden chamber beyond Vault B has thick walls made of solid gold. The mystery surrounding Vault B has fueled numerous stories and legends, with some even suggesting that opening the vault could lead to catastrophic events, such as flooding the city or revealing hidden alien spaceships. Despite the curiosity and speculation, Vault B remains unopened to this day. What does Saleh exactly mean? Saleh is a term found in the Book of Psalms within the Hebrew Bible, and its precise meaning has puzzled scholars for centuries. This ancient term, transliterated directly from Hebrew, appears numerous times throughout the Psalms but lacks a definitive explanation. Scholars have proposed various interpretations for the meaning of Saleh. Some believe it signifies a musical notation or pause within the text, indicating a break or interlude in the singing or recitation of the Psalms. Others suggest it serves as a directive to reflect or mediate upon the words that precede it, prompting readers to pause and consider the significance of the preceding verses. Other perspective proposes that Saleh might denote an emphasis or elevation, drawing attention to specific verses or conveying the importance of the text being highlighted. Additionally, some scholars theorize that Saleh could also possibly connect to ancient Hebrew religious ceremonies or worship practices, although its exact role in these contexts remains uncertain. Now on to tier 3, Mystery of the Mummy from KV-55. The mummy discovered in the tomb KV-55 in the Valley of Kings, Egypt, 
has long been shrouded in mystery regarding its identity. Unearthed in 1907, the mummy found within this tome has been a subject of intense debate and speculation among archaeologists and historians. Initially thought to be the remains of Pharaoh Akhenaten, due to its location near other members of his family and facial similarities to Akhenaten's depictions, there has been ongoing contention regarding the mummy's true identity. Some experts suggest it might be Queen Taiyi, Akhenaten's mother, based on facial features and items associated with the burial. Further complicating the mystery, subsequent examinations and analysis of the mummy and tome artifacts have led to differing opinions. Some scholars propose that the mummy might belong to Svenkakil, a pharaoh who succeeded Akhenaten briefly. Others have suggested the possibility of the mummy being Nefertiti, Akhenaten's wife, due to an inscription referring to the great royal wife. The uncertainty surrounding the KV-55 mummy's identity persists though, due to the inconclusive evidence, conflicting theories, and the lack of definite proof or inscriptions linking the mummy to a specific historical figure. The Lady of the Spiked Throne The Lady of the Spiked Throne refers to a mysterious artifact from the Indus Valley Civilization, dating back to the 3rd millennium BC. This artifact, a terracotta group sculpture, depicts a woman seated in a spiked throne, which has been described as a bull-headed boat or chariot. The woman and her entourage display unusual features, including large almond-shaped eyes, elongated heads or headdresses, and beak-like noses. The woman is in a position of power, suggesting she could be a priestess, a queen, or a divinity. However, the absence of information about the artifact's provenance and archaeological context makes it difficult to determine its true origin and purpose. The artifact was first studied by Italian archaeologist Massimo Vidale, who was invited by a private collector to examine it in 2009. Vidale found the artifact to be unique and puzzling, leading him to extensively study, photograph, and write about it. The Lady of the Spike Throne is a set of 15 figurines in a bull-shaped object. Some interpretations suggest the presence of human sacrifice in the composition, a practice found in other civilizations as well. Despite the extensive study, the true identity and significance of the Lady of the Spike Throne still remain a mystery. Dolmen of Antiquara the Dolmen of Antiquara is a megalithic structure located near Antiquara in Andusalia, Spain. Dating back to the Neolithic period, approximately 3700 to 3200 BCE, it is an iconic and well-preserved megalithic monument, recognized for its historical significance and architectural prowess. This dolmen is a colossal chamber tome composed of large stone slabs and megalithic blocks, forming a crater leading into a central chamber. The stones used in the construction are massive, some reaching up to 180 tons in weight. The Dolmen of Antiquara is notable for its alignment with the natural landscape, such as the nearby Pena de los Enamorados, Lover's Rock Mountain, which has served as a significant cultural and symbolic element for the ancient builders. Its orientation might have held astronomical or ritualistic significance, possibly linked to solar or lunar alignments during solstices or equinoxes. Some other theories propose that it was a burial site or ceremonial structure used for religious or ritualistic practices by the Neolithic communities in the region. Gospel of Judas The Gospel of Judas is an ancient text that surfaced in the early 2000s, causing significant interest and debate among scholars and the public due to its portrayal of Judas Iscariot, one of the 12 disciples of Jesus Christ, in a different light from traditional biblical accounts. Discovered in the 1970s in Egypt and later translated and made public in 2006, the Gospel of Judas is a Gnostic gospel believed to have been composed around the 2nd century AD. The text portrays Judas not as a traitor but as a trusted confidant of Jesus who was entrusted with the secret revelation. According to his gospel, Judas was instructed by Jesus to facilitate his arrest and crucifixion as part of a larger divine plan. In this narrative, Judas' actions were not acts of betrayal but rather obedience to Jesus' wishes. The gospel suggests that Judas had a special role in helping Jesus shed his physical body to liberate his spiritual self. The gospel of Judas presents a Gnostic perspective emphasizing secret knowledge and salvation through spiritual understanding rather than adherence to traditional beliefs. Gnostic texts often challenge conventional Christian teachings and offer alternative interpretations of biblical events. Its authenticity and historical accuracy have been subject to scholarly debate though. Krishna's Butterball Krishna's Butterball, a natural rock formation in Malabaripuram, Tamil Nadu, India, has puzzled scientists and visitors alike due to the improbable balance and resistance to gravitational pull. The mystery lies in the rock's colossal size, weighing several hundred tons and its positioning atop a sloping hillside. The rock's immense weight, along with its minuscule contact point with the ground, seem to defy the laws of physics by remaining balanced without rolling down a hill. Scientists and geologists have been intrigued by how such a massive boulder 
could maintain its stability for centuries despite seemingly unstable placement. While there isn't a definite explanation for the rock's stability, several theories attempt to explain Krishna's butterball. Some scientists attribute its balance to the composition of the granite bedrock and the rock's specific shape, which provides the natural centers of mass and prevents it from rolling down. Another theory suggests that the boulder's stability results from a combination of geological factors including its rounded shape, surface friction, and the absence of seismic activity in the region, which has kept it in place for centuries. The Tome of Imhotep The Tome of Imhotep, a legendary ancient Egyptian polymath and architect, remains an unsolved mystery in the field of Egyptology. Imhotep, revered as a physician, priest, and architect, is renowned for his exceptional talents and is believed to have designed the Steppe Pyramid of Djoser at Saqqara, among other accomplishments. Despite its prominence and historical significance, the exact location of Imhotep's tomb has eluded discovery. Imhotep lived during the early dynastic period, and while his contributions to ancient Egypt were celebrated, the whereabouts of its final resting place have remained unknown. Efforts to locate Imhotep's tomb have been ongoing for centuries, with researchers and archaeologists exploring various sites and tombs in Egypt, particularly in Saqqara, where he is believed to have served as an advisor to Pharaoh Djoser. However, no conclusive evidence linking any specific tome to Imhotep has been discovered. The mystery surrounding Imhotep's tome has sparked numerous theories and speculations. Some researchers propose that Imhotep might have been buried in a grand tome befitting his status, yet its locations remain hidden, possibly due to ancient looting or deliberate concealment. Lost City of the Kalahari The Lost City of Kalahari, also known as the City of the Sun or the City of the Moon, refers to a legendary ancient city said to exist within the Kalahari Desert in southern Africa. This mythical city has intrigued adventures for centuries, yet no concrete evidence has confirmed its existence. The oral traditions of local indigenous people, particularly the Sun Bushmen, have spoken of a magnificent city with towering structures made of gold or shining stones hidden somewhere in the vast expanse of the Kalahari Desert. Legends describe it as a place of great wealth, advanced technology, and remarkable architecture. European explorers and treasure hunters drawn by these tales embarked on numerous expeditions in the 19th and 20th centuries in search of the lost city of Kalahari. Despite extensive quests and speculation, no conclusive evidence or tangible remains of such a city have been discovered. Theories arose regarding the origin of these legends. Some suggest that these stories might be based on real ancient settlements that could have actually existed in the region, but were lost to time due to natural phenomena like desertification or were abandoned for other reasons. Others propose that it's possible that the stories of a grand city have been exaggerated over generations, transforming it into a legend. Mehrgar Wheel Amulet The Mehrgar Wheel Amulet is an ancient artifact discovered at the archaeological site of Mehrgar in present-day Pakistan. Mehrgar is considered one of the earliest Neolithic sites in the world, dating back to around 7000 BCE and it provides valuable insights into early human civilization. The wheel amulet found at Mehrgar is a small, intricately carved object made from terracotta. It is believed to be one of the earliest representations of a wheeled vehicle or possibly a symbol associated with the sun. The artifact depicts a stylized four-spoked wheel and its significance has sparked debate among archaeologists and historians. Some researchers view the wheel amulet as a symbolic representation of the wheel, a fundamental invention that revolutionized human transportation and technology. The presence of such a symbol at Mehrgar suggests the early understanding and conceptualization of wheeled vehicles or the importance of the wheel in their culture. Others interpret the wheel amulet as a solar symbol due to its resemblance to depictions of the sun. In ancient cultures, the sun often held significant religious and symbolic importance, representing power, life, and celestial cycles for the ancient people. Samothrace Temple Complex The Samothrace Temple Complex, located on the Greek island of Samothrace in the northeastern Aegean Sea, is an ancient religious site renowned for its sanctuary dedication to the enigmatic cult of the great gods. At the heart of the sanctuary lies the Sanctuary of the Great Gods, a religious center revered by various ancient civilizations from the 7th century BCE to the Roman period. The most notable structure within the complex is the Temple of the Great Gods, although it remains only partially preserved today. The site gained fame for its mysteries, secretive religious rites, and ceremonies performed in honor of the Great Gods, which attracted pilgrims from across the Mediterranean. The details of the ritual and the exact nature of the cult's belief remained largely unknown as the participants were sworn to secrecy and the rituals were never fully revealed. The most famous artifact from the Samothrace Temple Complex is the Winged Victory of Samothrace, also known as the Nike of Samothrace, a striking marble sculpture representing the Greek goddess Nike. This masterpiece, celebrated for its artistry and grandeur, was discovered in fragments on the island and is now housed in the Louvre Museum in Prayers. Marka Ruins 
Marca Uasi is a high plateau located in the Andes mountain of Peru, renowned for its enigmatic stone formations and purported ancient ruins. Situated about 4,000 meters above sea level, Marco Asi has drawn the entrance of explorers, spiritual seekers, and researchers due to its unique rock sculptures and mythical atmosphere. The site is famous for its natural rock formations that resemble various shapes including human faces, animals, and geometric figures. Some visitors and believers in paranormal phenomenon claim that these stone figures were created by an ancient civilization and have mystical or spiritual significance. However, there's ongoing debate among archaeologists and geologists regarding the origins of these formations. Advocates of Marca Uasi's archaeological significance suggest that the site might have been an ancient ceremonial center or place of worship for pre-Incan or pre-Columbian cultures. However, comprehensive evidence supporting these claims is limited, linked to differing opinions about the site's history and purpose. The remote location, high altitude, and the ambiguous nature of the rock formations contribute to the mystery and intrigue surrounding Marca Uasi. Others believe it possesses healing energies or mystical properties, drawing spiritual enthusiasts and new age practitioners seeking transcendental experiences. Mysterious Stone Structures in Saudi Arabia In recent years, satellite imagery has revealed numerous mysterious stone structures scattered across the desert of Saudi Arabia. These enigmatic formations, often referred to as gates, wheels, or keyholes, have piqued the interest of archaeologists and researchers due to their sheer number and intricate designs. The structures vary in size and shape, with some resembling wheel-shaped patterns made of stone walls radiating outward from a central hub, while others appear as straight lines forming geometric patterns or even animal-like shapes. These formations are typically made by arranging rocks on the ground, and their purpose and origin remain uncertain. Research suggests that these stone structures could date back thousands of years, possibly to prehistoric times or the Neolithic period. The age and purpose of these formations are subject to ongoing debate among experts, with various hypotheses proposed to explain their existence. Some theories suggest that these structures might have served as hunting traps or enclosures for animals. Others speculate that they could have had ritual or ceremonial purposes, possibly relating to ancient religious practices or astronomical observations. The lack of comprehensive archaeological investigations on the ground has made it challenging though to determine the actual function and significance of these stone structures. Factors such as remote locations in the desert and limited accessibility hinder detailed research and excavation efforts. Mysterious Graffiti in Pompeii the ancient Roman city of Pompeii, famously preserved by the eruption of Mount Vesuvius in 79 CE, contains numerous examples of graffiti that offer insights into the daily life, politics, and social interactions of the era. Also, comment down below if you've ever seen the movie Pompeii. I just watched it recently and it was a pretty cool movie. Anyways, this graffiti, etched or painted on the walls of buildings, provide a glimpse into the thoughts, beliefs, and activities of Pompeii's inhabitants. The graffiti found in Pompeii is diverse, covering a wide range of topics. Some of it includes simple messages, personal names, declarations of love, insults, political slogans, and even advertisements. It reflects the linguistic diversity of the time, featuring Latin as well as Greek and other regional dialects. One of the most famous pieces of graffiti found in Pompeii is the phrase Vesuvius Day, Vesuvius Dies, which is believed to have been written just before the eruption of Mount Vesuvius. This graffiti provides a haunting reminder of the impending disaster that was about to befall the city. Other graffiti depict everyday life such as tavern signs, election slogans, or references to local events. Some graffiti also reveal political opinions, showing support or opposition to certain political figures or expressing disaffection with the ruling class. The graffiti in Pompeii also include erotic and sexual content, showcasing the liberal attitude towards sexuality in ancient Roman society. Vitrified Forts Vitrified forts are ancient sites found primarily in Scotland and parts of Europe. These sites are characterized by stone structures with stones that show signs of having been subjected to intense heat, causing them to partially melt and fuse together. These forts typically consist of dry stone walls made without mortar. Evidence suggests that at some point in their history, these structures were exposed to extreme temperatures resulting in vertification, the process where the stones fuse due to heat. The exact reasons for vertification remain uncertain. Some believe it was deliberate, achieved by heating the stone walls intentionally, but why it was intentional also remains debated with suggestions ranging from fortification to ceremonial or ritualistic practices. Others propose that the vertification might have occurred accidentally, perhaps due to intense fires within the forts or during enemy attacks, resulting in the burning and melting of the stones. There are also theories suggesting that vertification might have held symbolic or ritual significance, possibly linked to religious practices or ceremonies. Giraffe culture the Giraffe culture refers to an ancient civilization that thrived in the region of Giraffe in southeastern Iran around 2500 BCE. This prehistoric culture was discovered in the early 21st century 
and has since attracted attention from archaeologists. The giraffe culture was uncovered through excavations that revealed an intensive urban settlement, complex architecture, and remarkable artifacts, suggesting a sophisticated society. Archaeologists unearthed monumental buildings, large drainage systems, and evidence of advanced metallurgy, including bronze objects and metal artifacts. One of the most significant discoveries associated with the giraffe culture is the finding of decorated artifacts made of chlorite, a greenish stone. These artifacts include vessels, statuettes, seals, and various objects adorned with designs and symbols. The quality and craftsmanship of these artifacts indicate a high level of artistic skill and craftsmanship. The discovery of draft culture challenged existing notions about early civilizations in the region and raised questions about its connection to neighboring ancient cultures, such as the Mesopotamian civilizations. Some scholars suggest that draft might have been an independent civilization with its own distinct culture and economic characteristics. However, due to limited archaeological research and the legal looting of sites, many aspects of the giraffe culture remain shrouded in mystery. The Mystery of the Headless Romans in York The discovery of headless Roman skeletons in York, England emerged during an archaeological excavation in 2004 at Driffield Terrace. The site revealed a burial ground containing over 80 individuals, primarily men aged 18 to 45, dating back to the Roman period, around the 2nd or 3rd century AD. What intrigued researchers was the peculiar state of the remains. Many skeletons were found without their skulls. This mystery surrounding the decapitated skeletons led to various theories about their circumstances. One hypothesis suggests that these individuals might have faced execution or severe punishment, leading to their decapitation. It's conceivable that they were criminals or prisoners subjected to such severe measures under Roman rule in Britain. Another theory speculates on a ritualistic or sacrificial purpose behind the decapitations. Some researchers propose that these burials could have held religious significance, possibly related to ancient burial practices or beliefs. There's also the possibility out there that these individuals are casualties or conflict of war, and their decapitation could have resulted from violent encounters during the Roman occupation. Dighton Rock Dighton Rock is a large boulder situated on the east bank of the Taunton River in Massachusetts, United States. The rock surface is covered with ancient petroglyphs, carvings of various symbols, shapes, and figures that puzzled researchers for centuries. The petroglyphs found on Dighton Rock comprise a mixture of geometric patterns, human-like forms, animals, and other markings. Despite extensive study, the exact origin, purpose, and meaning of these carvings remain uncertain, leading to a range of theories and interpretations. One prevalent theory suggests that the petroglyphs were carved by indigenous peoples of the region, possibly the Wampanoag or Narragansett tribes. However, the specific cultural significance or intended message conveyed by these symbols remain undeciphered. Researchers have proposed different explanations for the petroglyphs, including the possibility that they represent cultural symbols, religious iconography, storytelling, or historical records within the indigenous communities. Throughout history, there have also been controversial suggestions that the carvings could have European or even Fasonian origins, linked to speculation about potential pre-Columbian contact. The Underground City of Derenkuyu the underground city of Derenkuyu, also known as Elengubu, is an ancient multi-level subterranean city located in the modern town of Derenkuyu in Nevishil province, Turkey. It extends to a depth of approximately 85 meters and is large enough to have sheltered as many as 20,000 people together with their livestock and food stores. The city features amenities found in other underground complexes across Cappadocia such as wine and oil presses, stables, cellars, storage rooms, refectories, and chapels. Unique to the Derenkyu complex is a spacious room with a barrel vaulted ceiling located on the second floor. The city was fully formed in the Byzantine era and was heavily used as protection from Arab Muslims during the Arab-Byzantine Wars. The historical record has little definite information about its origins, with some speculating that the oldest part of the complex could have been dug around 2000 BCE by the Hittites, the people who dominated the region at the time, or else the Phrygians around 700 BC. Others claim that local Christians built the city in the 1st centuries AD. The city was finally abandoned in the 1920s by the Cappadocian Greeks when they faced defeat during the Greso Turkish War and fled abruptly on Massey to Greece. Thassos Murder Mystery The Thassos Murder Mystery revolves around the discovery of the remains of a heavily muscled man with a perfectly circular hole in his sternum, indicating a deliberate and fatal injury. The man was found in an ancient necropolis in Thassos an Aegean island in Greece and was buried in a conspicuous limestone grave of the Hellenistic period. The discovery, made in 2002, was part of an excavation that revealed the remains of 57 individuals. The nature of the man's injury, along with evidence from a dental analysis suggesting the decline in his diet before death, 
led researchers to conclude that he may have been a prisoner or captive in his final days. The circumstances surrounding his death remain unclear, but it's speculated that it may have occurred during a time of political upheaval, possibly following military turmoil or reprisals during a regime change. The ancient bones are currently housed at the Archaeological Museum of Thassos, and the findings were published in a study by the lead researchers Anagnostes Agarakis. The discovery and subsequent analysis shed light on this ancient murder mystery, providing valuable insights into the life and demise of the individual while also raising questions about the historical and political context in which the event took place. Alaric's Lost Treasure The tale of Alaric's Lost Treasure is a historical mystery intertwined with the life and death of Alaric I, a Visigothic king who played a significant role in the declining Roman Empire during the 5th century AD. Alaric, known for his leadership in military campaigns, led the Visigoths in several conflicts against the Roman Empire. In 410 AD, he successfully captured Rome, marking a significant event in the fall of the Western Roman Empire. During the sack of Rome, Alaric and his forces looted the city, seizing vast amounts of wealth, including gold, silver, precious artifacts, and other treasures. Following the sack of Rome, Alaric aimed to transport the plundered treasures to his Visigothic stronghold in southern Italy. However, shortly after the sack, Alaric unexpectedly died, leaving the exact location of the treasure uncertain. Legends and rumors abound regarding the fate of Alaric's lost treasure. Some accounts suggest that upon his death, Alaric was buried along with his riches in a riverbed, diverting the river's course to conceal his tomb and the treasure. Another legend proposes that the treasure was buried in a secret location to prevent its capture by rival factions or Roman forces. Over time, various treasure hunters and explorers have searched for Alaric's lost riches, yet the treasure's exact whereabouts remain elusive and have not been substantiated. Where Hannibal got his elephants from? Hannibal, the Carthaginian military commander, famously crossed the Alps with elephants during the Second Punic War from 218 to 201 BC. The elephants played a crucial role in Hannibal's military strategy against the Roman Republic and are often associated with his daring and formidable campaign. The elephants used by Hannibal were North American forest elephants, a species smaller than the larger African bush elephants. These elephants were native to the region of North Africa, particularly areas within the Carthaginian territories which encompass parts of present-day Tunisia, Algeria, and Libya. Carthage, a powerful ancient city-state and Hannibal's homeland, likely sourced the elephants from the forests of North Africa. The Carthaginians were familiar with these elephants and used them in various capacities, including in warfare and ceremonial events. It's believed that Hannibal gathered his famous war elephants from Carthaginian territories in North Africa before embarking on his ambitious military expeditions across the Alps into Italy. These elephants were trained, prepared, and incorporated in Hannibal's army to provide both strategic advantage and psychological impact during battles against the Romans. So that concludes the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed. Consider liking and subscribing and dropping a comment if you liked it. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye.